Hey everyone, uh, welcome. You, you saw the thumbnail, you read the title, you know what we're doing. We're doing paint pouring. Um, if you don't know what that is or if you're new to it, like me, it's acrylic paints that have been thinned down and essentially all you do is pour them on a canvas to make kind of a, a swirly design. There's different ways to do it, but here's one example here. I'm sorry about the glare. I know it's bad. I didn't know how to fix it, but um, that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. Oh, except that I'm new to this. Um, I did want to say why I got the kit um, just briefly. It's because it said the canvases are stretched and primed, which tells me it's real canvas and not canvas boards or just cardboard painted white. So I have a lot of hope in this kit. Uh, we'll see how that goes. They propose five different techniques and I want to try two of them because there's only two boards. But um, let's get into the footage of me, of me doing that. Okay, voiceover time. So uh, what I'm doing here is just kind of setting up an area that's going to make my cleanup a little bit easier. So I'm putting down a baking sheet and then putting like a plastic tarp over that. So when the paint falls off the canvas and onto my workspace, I don't have to scrub it for hours on end, which is nice, I guess, if you're into that. Um, the instructions were pretty helpful. They did take you through the different um, pours that they suggested. It was about five different pours, traditional pour, dirty pour, tree ring pour, and flip cup pour, also puddle pour. Um, I ended up doing flip cup pour for both of these canvases. I did it on the first one and it was really fun. And I decided that I wanted to get the same kind of look for the second one. So basically, uh, what I what you just do is you fill shut up phone is you fill a cup up with the different paints that you're going to be using and you layer them that's what you can see me doing here and then you put the canvas on top of it and you flip it over and pour it out it did include a palette knife and popsicle sticks just smear the paint to the edges so you can get the falling off the edges kind of look but I found that mine naturally ran off the edges and I didn't need to use the popsicle sticks or the uh, palette knife although I did keep the palette knife in case I want to do a palette knife painting later so this is my first uh, paint pour here that I did you can see I'm just getting ready to flip it over Something that I was concerned about with this kit is that they weren't going to have enough paint to actually cover both canvases, but I was actually surprised that it did cover both canvases and I had enough extra to achieve the kind of effect that I was looking for. Something that was um, helpful, or um, an extra, I guess, that the kit didn't have to include but ended up including, was the glitter that you can see me dumping on right now. It's just something to give the piece a little bit of extra pizzazz. I ended up regretting putting the glitter on there, but um, as you'll see later, I fixed it, kinda, sorta. I would definitely, if you're going to do a paint pour, I would definitely recommend throwing that um, plastic sheet down because this made a huge mess and I still got it all over my hands even though I had gloves on and I got it on the table as well. Um, but not as much as it would have been if I had just done it without the tarp, so definitely, definitely use that tarp. So for this... For the first paint pour that I did, I tried not to mix the layers too much um, because I thought it would look cooler if they weren't like all mixed up and stuff. But as you can see, that one came out kind of basic, not the, the best thing that you've seen, not the aesthetic that I was necessarily looking for. So the second one, I made sure to throw in all the different colors, making sure they mixed without making a new color, you know, like, without making, yeah, 
yeah, they, yeah, that, I make sense. Anyway, this second one was definitely my favorite of the two, probably because of those pockets and stuff in the pink. Hey everyone, um, I recorded that paint pouring bit about six or eight hours ago, and the pieces are already dry. Uh, the kit said it would take 24 hours, but they're already dry, so I might as well show you. My original plan was to just do the paint pour and be done, but I had some concerns, and I'll show you. So this one's my favorite right here. This is the second one that I did. It's already glaring. Ah, there we go, no glare. Um, I just kind of threw the glitter on there, haphazardly. Um, here's the other one I did. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but right there, is that right there? No, it's right there. Right there, that's where the pink tarp, um, doubled back on itself while these were drying. So the pink tarp got stuck. To that little piece of uh, blue paint right there. Um, and this glitter is just kind of annoying. So I wanted to fix it up a little bit. I decided I wanted to put a design on top of these. That wasn't my original plan. My original plan was just to be done with it. But these are a little bland. It looks like a six-year-old could accomplish this same look even though I'm slightly more advanced than a six-year-old. So, we're gonna spruce these up. We're not gonna put them in the oven. This is just how I had them drying. Um, let's jump into whatever I end up doing with these. Okay, voiceover part two. So here I am showing you the colors that I'm going to be using for this painting. I tried to match the pink, purple, and blue of the uh, canvas, but then I also picked up some white and some black. Here I'm trying to show you my sketch for these paintings. It's two toucans that their noses meet in the middle, the, or excuse me, their beaks meet in uh, the middle to make a little heart. So I was trying to scratch off some of the extra glitter um, just to make my life a little bit easier. And then you saw me trying to use a um, chalk pencil to sketch that out. That wasn't working. So I moved on to these like highlighter pen things that I picked up also from Walgreens. Um, they worked pretty good. When I got onto sketching the second one, they were running a little bit dry because it didn't like drawing over all of that glitter. But other than that, they're um, nice, and I was surprised how well they actually showed up on camera. So basically what I'm just going to do now is um, sketch in the two cans and then start the painting. Anyway, so um, this goes on for quite a while, so I was just um, going to say real quick that I wanted to actually commit to an upload schedule, um, even if I can't get them out on a weekly basis like I'm going to try to do, at least I can have some sort of semi-regular content, um, keeping the channel active, that kind of thing. So it's going to be Sunday afternoon, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central, 1 o'clock Mountain, and noon Pacific. And um, Arizona has to figure that out by themselves because they already did all this math. Anyway, so um, I'm just blocking in that black now. I'm starting in on the white, or trying to, um, for the toucan's chest. This took many, many coats because I was using that um, cheap like paint that you can get from Walmart and basically everywhere. At first, I didn't like the one on the left, the one that I'm working on right, well, the one that I was working on. Um, but it ended up being my favorite of the two. Um, I did, I was going to mention the big um, selling point of this design is that the beaks of the toucans are ombre. So by the head, 
It is pink and then it blends all the way down to the tip of the beak where it is blue. So the technique that I was doing for that, and you can see me um, in a few seconds, you can see me starting to struggle with that. But I ended up having to do um, a white coat on the beaks to make sure that the ombre was popping and didn't blend into the background. Um, obviously I didn't, you can, yeah, you need white under there, sweetie. That's not going to show up. Uh, sorry about my head in frame, by the way. So what I ended up actually having to do is mix the um, tertiary colors in between the pink and the blue. So I had a pink and the blue, and then a total midway color, and then a slightly pinkish color, but still kind of blue, and then a slightly bluish color, but still kind of pink. So I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but in all, I ended up using about um, five colors and only the pink and the blue were from the jar, which is super frustrating because I would have to stop and make more colors to get the ombre to blend and it was just a mess. So yeah, you still need an undercoat on there, stupid. You can see me trying to blend it out now. It looks okay on camera, but um, it was absolutely atrocious in real life. <laughs> It was, uh, it was pretty bad. So I ended up just wiping off most of that paint that I'm working on right now because it was so ugly. And then I ended up doing a white coat. So the other one came out better because it didn't have that undercoat of messed up ombre and it was just flat. Uh, in the lamp's reflection off of the painting that I'm working on right now, you can kind of see where the pink tarp bent over and touched on the canvas. I tried to cover it up with the beaket the best I could. You can definitely see it now that the shine's hitting it just right. Um, I definitely regret putting the glitter on there. It was a huge mess to draw around and to paint on, and it was just messy all over. So now I've learned that I actually need an undercoat, so I'm just fixing that up. That took about 20 minutes. Coat after coat. I did uh, stop the camera there to put a few more coats on. That's why it looks more vivid. I'm working on my colors now because they uh, completely dried up over the few days that I, I left them out. Who would know that paint dries? Anyway, you can see I've switched the um, two cans now. The one that was on the left is now on the right. And I'm trying to blend it out. Obviously struggling to keep my head out of frame. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Hey everyone, so um... It's a new day, and um, I, I didn't realize that the memory in my camera cut out um, through me painting partway through the, um, the painting of the ombre, and you didn't even get to see the painting on the other one. So um, I'm here to show you the finished products because now my camera has now my camera has some memory again. Um, Uh, I'm trying to hold them so like you can get the, the the heart just right. Here they are. Do you like them? I hope you like them. I hated painting them so I hope you like them. Um, yeah, so that's it right there. Like, that's six hours of hard work and it just looks so simple. Anyway, um, I'm really happy with how it came out. Uh, I think I'm gonna put it up on my walls back there somewhere. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, I am gonna try to adhere to that upload schedule, so uh, watch for that. Uh, if you want in-between video upload content, I do have an Instagram. It's um, buffalo lover underscore does underscore art. I know it's long, but I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, if you got this far, you 
you obviously liked it, so um, you should you should like the video. Um, and if this kind of content is right up your alley, like your cup of tea, uh, yeah, you should subscribe. Maybe I'm gonna be more regular about posting videos now. Maybe, um, yeah. So here they are. Thank you for watching.